i3 is my favorite window manager, or at least it is right now. I'm sure sometime off in the far future, I will find another window manager that I like, and maybe I'll call that my favorite at that point. But at the moment, i3 window manager, or specifically i3 gaps, is my favorite tiling window manager. And it's for many reasons. I've talked about this in a video before, so I don't really need to get into it too much. But I think i3 is just kind of the best overall window manager. You can do so much to it, but you don't need to get into the nitty gritty of a coding language in order to customize it. You can add as many workspaces as you want, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And it gives you some flexibility over how you control your key bindings, how you do the rules, and just a ton of stuff. But there are actually quite a few things that I didn't know you could actually do with i3, and I'm betting that a lot of you didn't know you could do these things with i3 either. So what we're going to do today is talk about five things that I found surprising that you could do with the i3 window manager. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing is that if you have two windows side by side, and I'm not sure if I'm going to actually be able to demonstrate this because it's actually kind of hard, but if you just manage to get your mouse in the right spot, you can actually drag windows side by side to resize them. Now, I don't know why you'd want to do this because kind of the whole point of using a tiling window manager is to use your keyboard. And resizing with a keyboard is much easier because you, if you know the key, key bindings or you've set the key bindings in an appropriate way, you can do it way easier than that. You don't have to worry about being in the precise spot in order to do this. So the precise spot is really right over one of your borders. So if you hover right over a border and then click and you do get it just right, you can then drag to resize the windows. So like I said, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can do it. So the next one is really interesting. So if I go into my configuration file, so my repo i3 and then vim into config, one of the things that I've done here in my rules directory is that I've turned off the borders when there's only one client. So this is something that you can do with DWM for sure. I'm sure you can do this with other window managers as well, but I had no clue you could do this with i3. So if I have two windows open, you'll see I have borders. If I only have one of these windows open, no border. And the way you do this is this line right here. So you just do hide underscore edge underscore borders and then smart. And that will have it so that there's no borders when there's only one client and you can have borders when there's more than one client. So that is really cool, especially if you use my next tip. And my next tip is if you are a gaps person, so, so you have gaps enabled using i3 gaps like I do, and you would like it so that the gaps only show up when you have multiple clients. So if you see here, I have gaps enabled right here when I have multiple clients, but if I close them, I no longer do. All the gaps are gone. And you do this by turning smart gaps on. So smart underscore gaps on will have it so that when you only have one client on the screen, the gaps go away. If you have multiple clients on the screen, you then have gaps. And I like this because if you have just one client, this gives you the maximum amount of real estate on your screen outside of actually having a bar. But if you have multiple clients, I like having gaps because it helps separate the workspaces a little bit. So it tells me that these two things are separate. If they were without gaps and just had the borders, while well, yes, it would give me more room on the screen, it would kind of mesh things up just a little bit too much for me. So I like, I like having the gaps when there's multiple clients, but having it so that there's no gaps when there's just one client is actually really cool. Now, my next one is one that is specifically made for me because I have this, I know I don't know what you'd say, probably a obsession with making my i3 configuration file as small as possible. And I want it to be just as few lines as possible. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. I don't know why. It's stupid. It really doesn't matter. It's not as if I'm removing lines of code in the actual program to make it leaner. I'm just making my configuration file smaller. I like doing that. For ages, I had these rules one rule at a time. So I had four window class equals pulse floating enable and then I had this part again and then this part and then this part again and then this part and then this part again and then this part and I had it for each one of these classes. You don't need to do that. Instead, you can put them all on one line. So 
if you have several rules for this class, all you have to do is put the rules in here and then put a comma between them. So each of these commas just denotes a line in this case. So you can have multiple rules for this class all on one line. That means that you can tidy things up and you don't have to have multiple lines stating what class you're talking about. Now, I don't think that this is going to be all that useful for a lot of people because chances are when you have a rule, you probably are just looking for one rule and you don't have all of these rules here. But if you're using scratch pads, so like I use scratch pads, there's multiple rules that you need. So you need to have it floating. You need to have it set to a certain size. You need to have the move scratch pad command. And you, if you want to turn off the borders, you need to turn off the borders just like that. And if you have to list each of these out one line at a time, that gets messy. Having them all on one line is fantastic. I just discovered this this morning. It's excellent. It's very good. So the last one on the list is probably the coolest one because I had no clue this thing even existed. And I don't know how useful it's going to be for most people, but if you have multiple monitors, it could be super useful. And this really doesn't matter how many monitors you have. As long as you have more than one, this thing works. So let's just say you're on workspace number four and you want to move this thing, this whole workspace. Let's just say you have multiple windows open. I have multiple windows open and I want to move this whole workspace, every single client that's on this workspace to the other monitor. How would I do that? Well, I could tediously move all of these windows over one by one. I could do that. But there's actually a way to move this entire workspace, workspace number four, over to the other monitor. And I do that in my case with super shift and M. And you won't be able to see this because I'm not recording that screen at this moment, but right now where workspace four was on this screen, it's now on this screen. Now it doesn't do any swapping like you would see in like Qtile or Xmonad or something like that. No, instead it just picks up the whole workspace, all four of those windows I just had, and moves it to this monitor. And I can do the exact same thing again. If I do super shift M again, it goes, comes back over to this monitor. So that's really cool. Now I will say this, I'm gonna close these here. The way you do this is with this line right here. So I have it set to mod shift M and what, it, what the command is, is it moves workspace to output next. That's how you do it. And that will always move it to the output on the right side. So if you have three monitors and you start off on the farthest left, it'll move it to the center one and then the right is the one to the first right and then it will rotate back around. I think that's how it would work. Because I only have two, I can't really test that. It just goes back and forth for me, but that's how you would do it. And you can set that to whatever key binding you want. So it won't be super shift M by default. This is not in the configuration by default. You have to add it. So if you want, if you want this, you, you would create the key binding that you want and then add this part here, move workspace to output next. And that will move the workspace to the next monitor. And it doesn't matter how many windows you happen, happen to have open. So for example, let me move Right on this workspace, on this monitor here, I have workspace 15 in focus. So if I put my mouse over there and do super shift M, I now have workspace 15 over here on this monitor. And you can see that, see workspace 15. And normally I have it set up so that workspace 15 is always, always on this monitor. Like I have it in my configuration file for that to always be true. But because I've used this key binding, it's moved it over here. I think that's fantastic. And I'm going to use this all the damn time because it's every once in a while, like I want OBS right in front of me, or I want a uh, crusader right in front of me, or I want discord, whatever. Normally what I would have to do would be to move that client to another workspace that happens to be on this monitor, but no, I can move the whole monitor and it's much more efficient, especially if you have multiple clients on the workspace you want to move. So if I had two terminals side by side and I wanted to move it from one monitor to the other, both clients, that would be way easier to do with this than instead of moving one client at a time. So those are the tips that I have for you. And I think they're amazing. Now they're a little obscure and I'm not sure how useful they'll be for everybody, but hopefully there's at least one there that will help you out. If you have other i3 tr tricks that uh, you would like to share, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon and all my other social media networks. You can find those links in the video description below. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast. 
I would normally read the names out here, but for whatever reason, my graphic is not working for some odd reason. I'll get that fixed for the next video. So thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon. I really do appreciate that. If again, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.